Good afternoon. Today is the 11th of November, although you'll be seeing this probably um, at the start of next week. And it's time for yet another of the Very Vague Vlogs. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Very Vague Vlogs, and I think probably about half of you will be unfamiliar with them, these were originally introduced as um, vlogs to sort of uh, produce content during the first lockdown. I think the first one would have happened in April or May. Um, they happened for a period of 10 weeks and they finished on uh, the 4th of July, I think it was, or something like that. So maybe 6th of July. I've reintroduced the very vague vlogs. We've already had one sort of unofficial one that was already the channel update. And then we had the first one last week, which actually went live this morning. They're normally filmed this way round. Um, they're not filmed um, in a way pointing towards me. They're normally pointing in this direction. The reason for this is actually because the audio quality is better like this. But this was the view for a number of weeks. Um, they were recorded very often just driving from Eastleigh, where I am now, um, driving to my mother's house, which is in Winchester. And uh, we'll be following the very well-worn path of uh, going up the M3, a couple of junctions, and I'll just stop short of where she lives because um, I don't think she probably appreciates her, her address being on camera. Though I do sometimes film in her drive, but I don't, I'm not showing where that is or how you get there. The purpose of the, today's video is to talk about the Rover 45 V6 that I'm in today. Um, I don't think you can probably hear much of the noise of the engine. It doesn't need to happen very much with the very big noise. You can't really hear the engine very much, even under quite hard acceleration. But we're just joining the M3 now. It's pretty empty on the road, as you can expect. I am going to my mother's house for a reason, of course. Uh, that goes without saying, but I do actually do some work for her a couple of times a week anyway, sort of um, clerical work. There's a property portfolio my mother owns, she, she inherited from my uh, late grandfather 30 years ago, and I help her to manage that these days. I've done for about 10 years, in addition to other work that I do. So I'm just on the way there to and discuss the property matters with her and um, I'm probably going to be going to the shops as well um, uh, for her afterwards. So today's very vague vlog, this is I think number 11 in the series. Actually no, it's 12, gosh, there's been 12 of these already. We're going to be talking about the trip I took up to see Mr. Colvin. Um, over the weekend. Not so much about the Alpha 90, but some of you will have seen on the channel already. Uh, the walk around of that car should have already appeared on the channel and the full review will be appearing at some point this week. But more to do with what we did with the Rover. Now Mr Coleman has been instrumental from quite early on in, in the ownership of that car, in fact he was there when the car was bought back in June. Um, right up until now he will be doing a little quick service on it and then his uncle will be emoting the car. Uh, we think at some point between the uh, end of this month and uh, the middle of December. And so uh, when I wanted him to do, do some work on the car uh, he was very happy to do that. Obviously, we're in a social bubble, he and I, and have been since June. So, it's very, very um, sort of above board, really, to go and see him and to uh, you know, spend time there for any reason, really, if you're in a social bubble. But uh, there were a couple of reasons to go there. One was to do the Alpha 90 stuff, and also there was some work to be done on this car. Ever since we bought the car, which was uh, in June, one of the rear brake calipers has been sticking on it. The 
be binding and Mr. Cobb did pull it apart and wind it back when he changed the brake pads but actually what had happened with this car is that 3,000 miles since they were last done the brake pads which you would have seen in the thumbnail for this video have been wearing very unevenly the inner pad was absolutely fine but the outer pad had worn straight down because of the caliper binding now obviously that's not a very desirable situation because it means you wear the brake pads out really quickly and the outer one was almost worn down quite smooth so I had an emergency journey to a uh, well-known car park supplier that I won't mention because we don't mention that name on this channel to get some new brake pads for the car at about half past three on a Saturday and that was fine um, I managed to go and pick them up and uh, in the darkness which is why we didn't film it um, Mr. Coleman was already fitting the new caliper and so I got some new pads obviously when you change brake pads you don't just put them in one side you put them in both sides so the car's actually had two complete changes of rear brake pads in my ownership, which is actually less than six months, but only about three and a half thousand miles. So that was done, new caliper, new pads, and uh, you know the car now brakes better, and it goes better because the caliper's not binding. In addition to this, some of you would have seen on the ownership report I did of this car that the coolant expansion tank which um, is the original one and is the same for many uh, Rovers of the period particularly the 45s, uh, 400s, things like that and the MGZS of course with the uh, K-series and diesel engines and the KB6 that was uh, starting to crack just because of age and also the cars had a new thermostat housing and that was because the engine you know, spectacularly started to overheat and blow the thermostat housing up uh, back in July another video that many long time viewers would have seen on my channel so Uh, expansion tank had become a little bit brittle and a bit weak and I could have got away with a few more months out of it but I went to the sort of second biggest MG and Rover parts supplier in the country which is Brown and Gammons and I ordered it from them. You can order them from Rover Brothers which is the sort of default place you go for Rover parts and try and parts and MG parts and things but they were more expensive. The one I've actually got in the car is not a reproduction part. You can buy reproduction parts, but it is an original MG Rover item from 2004, which is absolutely fantastic. In addition to this, the price from River Brothers was about £90. This was £45 delivered. And so I'm very happy about that. I did have to wait a little while for it to actually come back into stock, but God, I did, and it's been fitted, and yeah, that's fine. We also got a new um, cap for the expansion tank, which is advised to change every couple of years. And I'm pretty sure the one I had was either an original one or it was very old. I've just spotted a post facelift row 25. Let's see if we can catch up with this. Hold on, come on, V6. I'm not going to be able to catch up with it. Hold on. But there we are. So, new expansion tank, new cap for expansion tank, new brake caliper, new uh, rear pads. Anyway, you can sort of see it in the background there. Um, yes, new brake, new brake pads, new caliper, new expansion tank, new cap. It's more coolant. The only thing I have to do for the MOT, Mr. Cobb used to be an MOT tester, so kind of roughly knows what I need to do anyway is uh, have an oil, oil and oil filter change I don't need to do the air filter and then we'll submit it for um, 
the MOT, which should be should be fine. So that's it, really. Thank you ever so much indeed for watching uh, this very vague vlog. It's not very exciting, but you know, lockdown's not very exciting anyway um, for most of us, I'm afraid. And um, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below. Also, got a Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Also, Instagram, instagram.com forward slash Lloyd underscore vehicle underscore consulting. Thank you.